My name is Jackson, first of all. I'm on the community team here at Snowplow. Um, thanks very, very much for joining us today. Uh, we've got Peter and Emil uh, to, to walk us through what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to be looking at uh, accelerating insights for your e-commerce application. This is something that uh, the team's put a lot of work into uh, over recent months. It's something we're pretty excited about, and it's something that can genuinely make quite a big difference to quite a lot of people. So we really want to spread this message as, as far and wide as we possibly can. And we hope that you get a lot out of today and that you are, uh, yeah, have a lot to to uh, talk about and think about afterwards if you do have questions feel free to just drop them directly into the chat um, we will take time at the end to go over questions and answers um, but you can also just unmute yourself and and ask anything that you'd like to ask if something does does pop up front of mind that's totally okay in these sorts of events as well um, they're supposed to be quite quite open like that we want to make sure that you guys get all the answers that, that you need so We'll kick off. Uh, yeah, we'll kick off straight away. I'll hand over to Peter, who's going to walk you through the first half of uh, the presentation. Take it away, Peter. Good. Thank you, Jackson. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, really happy to be here. And yeah, let's go over like a super quick introduction. I'm Peter. I'm a software engineer here in Snowplow. Uh, and Emil, uh, analytics engineer uh, at our team. Uh, we've been working on the e-commerce data product accelerator, as you will see. And we're uh, really, really excited to show you through, uh, let's say our first wave of work on the e-commerce accelerator. And let's move forward like with, uh, let's say all the, the good parts, which start off with tracking the e-commerce interactions. I mean, that's, that's what we're here for. So, in that aspect, I will start, and then the all the modeling part and the visual part is for Mill. Uh, I'll be doing these these first topics, uh, going forward with uh, the release and the introduction of our new plugin of uh, the new plugin in our ecosystem, uh, which is what we call the Snowplow e-commerce package. Uh, what this package is and what it, it, it contains. Let me walk you over to the uh, to the documentation first of all. That's the the first thing that um, you people would like to see. Uh, certainly, the uh, on our plugins section on our docs, Snowplow e-commerce is the new package. And what we can see here is like a full documentation of all the methods, really familiar to those that have worked with e-commerce in the past with similar solutions or or likewise. Product views, add to cards, removals, list views, list clicks, checkout steps, transaction, uh, certainly the best part, and some additional entities that we're going to be explaining moving forwards. Uh, here in the documentation page, you can have a view of the API that we have provided in this version of the plugin. Uh, pretty straightforward in, in our view. We looked through um, some of the other implementations, some of our own ingenuity and the experience that we have in Snowplow. And we decided to create something really intuitive and straightforward. It would be really easy for people to jump in on the on the tracking side. Um, full examples and uh, some explanations as well of the methods, uh, which I, I really believe it's one of the things that uh, we might be missing in the industry as well, like really good documentation. So we, uh, together with the data product accelerator, we really invested on that. Explanation of all the entities that we're going to see moving forward as well. The each and every one of the attributes that we can add on the entities, depending on your implementation and uh, specifically your needs. Um, now, this is, let's say, the first that's what you can have on the, of the plugin. And let's move on to the actual meaty part of the data product accelerator is the e-commerce events, what we, what we can track and then certainly model and derive our insights from. Um, here's a list of the events, which yeah, it's pretty good visual, but what's better than to go through the actual guidance that we have provided on our accelerator project so that you can get up and running pretty quickly, especially um, on, on the setup part, the modeling part. Uh, we have some really good visualization as well that we're going to be talking about together with the modeling. And then um, 
in the future some some really extra stuff that we think are pretty good so aside from the standard uh, installation instruction for trackers um, basically we have a step-by-step -step showcase of when how and in which context is if you may on your e-commerce uh, journey you need to let's say track the, the appropriate interactions for example the product view which for those not so familiar with the e-commerce um, with e-commerce sites and uh, the, the regular insights that we want to, to extract is yeah when we see the product description page um, and here's a specific command that we want to track again the attributes which are available uh, so no surprises here you have a full documentation of what is required what's not same thing for um, the rest of the e-commerce event for example the cart uh, you can track any kind of cart interactions removals addition multiple products uh, single product and and what have you um, everything that is required and some suggestions as well that we will see moving forwards it's in the data product accelerator it's in my view and i think that's um the whole point of it is more of a hand holding approach close to a hand holding approach on how you can get up and running with all these really cool e-commerce events um after the current interactions we have the product list events which what we mean by product list for those that are not familiar again with e-commerce context uh you go on your favorite e-commerce store you see the list of products for example, it could be women's shoes or like winter special or anything like that. Uh, that's we, what we consider a product list. So this is the, the classic reference of a product list. But um, this is like some of the recommendations that we are adding in the mix as well. In the same manner, what you can do by tracking, let's say, product list events um, in other parts of your websites, such as let's say you might have this really cool new feature like the shop the look groups and bundles you might have the frequently bought with lists that probably you see below some of the product pages as well product recommendations on your checkout store yes this uh, at least for me makes sense to be tracked as a product list and even product search results uh something that uh, we've seen let's say with, with our experience in Snowplow and the understanding of e-commerce stores and the, the, the quality of insights that we want to extract from user interactions, it's pretty important that understanding the way to track product lists in search results, which could be, um, as we showcase below with our API, what we can do is that we can provide a name, which would be in the regular case, the name of the product list, but on, let's say, a bit more advanced use case, you have the name of the search query and the search result. And then you have all the required attributes of a product and the whole list of, let's say, the position, the, the price, the list price, any discount applied on the products. And then you can even, with this implementation and the way that these data are modeled, you can even go and see as well, let's say, how did this specific query and the search engine that returned the products, let's say, what was the performance of that list? Uh, how did the positions of that list perform? So again, to mention that aside from the straightforward approach, we provide some pretty good ideas that you can use in the e-commerce tracking. And specifically here, we're talking about product lists. Uh, now the moving one step on the funnel a bit lower, uh, we have the checkout steps. Here, what we uh, what we decide to do is provide, let's say, more of a free kind of a free approach on the checkout step. For example, we have seen implementation with two checkout steps, three checkout steps, single page applications might be your case, and each of these, let's say, um, specific slices of checkout, basically you can track them independently. So what we provided are, let's say, the capability to track each of these separately. Um, it doesn't matter if you have three steps, four steps, 60 steps. Um, you can track them as you want. And um, as we did on, on the other in-commerce entities, 
we provided what we consider a set of reasonable default attributes, which we have sourced from, let's say, um, all the e-commerce implementations that we've seen. Most of them have this set of checkout attributes that you can use, track, and then model in, in your own way, as uh, Emil will, will talk about later on. So this is one of the, let's say, the, the fundamental thinking that we got behind the e-commerce accelerator. From the get-go, we provide a reasonable defaults, um, many dimensions or like qualitative attributes that you can use and probably they can fit your use case as well. So you can get up and like um, uh, hit the ground running in a way on your e-commerce implementation as well. Same thing about the transactions. They kind of the most important part. I think everyone's interested in this one. Um, again, pretty straightforward API, the attributes that we want to add. Um, just a note here uh, to, to mention that this is kind of a, one of our unique USPs in Snowplow, our schemas, and the, the philosophy behind the schemas and the data quality that we want to target. Basically, all the attributes are documented on the schemas, but you can have example values, so we can guarantee the best kind of quality on, on, this, um, on these interactions. Moving forwards, we have the, uh, the two entities which we considered the, the initial and mo most the most important ones uh, that we can add from the get-go on our e-commerce accelerator, which we which is what we call the page type and the user context. Um, just a quick uh, intro to those. For example, you have your e-commerce store, and certainly it, most of the pages are based on five, six, seven standard layouts or templates or what have you. You may call them as you want. For example. Uh, the home page, you have this uh, an initial layout, product description pages, card page, checkout step, index N, um, the PLPs, product list pages, and other kind of pages as well. So it's what we have found is that it's pretty useful to understand in a higher level your content grouping, if you may, of the pages. So you can segment, split the any kind of insights and events based on the type of the page that this interaction took place in. So you can set the page type. This comes again from the Snowplow e-commerce package and um, an additional user entity, which for now um, is pretty lean, but we plan on enriching it pretty, pretty much in the future, which is the e-commerce user. For now, it has some standard attributes, which we consider pretty useful. The ID, the identifier, if this uh, user, this e-commerce user is a guest, and certainly their email, which certainly helps as well in the modeling and stitching aspect. And finally, the, the testing part, which uh, the Snowplow, uh, Snowplow Inspector extension can help you with all the, the tracking needs that you need to check if everything goes out well on the, on the warehouse on your collector. And yeah, if you can go through the steps, I think we're in a, almost in a fully um, in a fully commerce implementation that you can basically get up off the ground. So, uh, and the final part for for my uh, from for my part, which is the kind of the new schemas which we have added in the course of this implementation, uh, which is the Snowplow e-commerce action product card, checkout step, transaction, page, and user. Um, the reason that I have added them on a specific slide is because one of the things that we uh, invested in and make sure that it's really, really easy to do as we do in, in the other parts of Snowplow as well, is that what we can, one moment, let me get this, okay. What we invested in is that we want to make sure that this implementation is extensible as well. As Snowplow has this philosophy for open source, and it's something that we heavily invest in from the start of the company, is how easy it is, since everything's open source, to add a new event, a new schema, new functionality that you might want, or even to get like to, to peek into how we created our own and then extend as needed. 
So I just have an example. This is, let's say, one of the upcoming features, which is the refund on the e-commerce tracking, uh, the, the schema, the refund, I'm sorry, the refund addition. This is just the changes that we needed to do on our JavaScript plugin to add the refund. It's a really small change for the people that understand code. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward and small change with testing uh, as always. And then the addition of the schema that corresponds to the refund, which would be, let's see, the schema as well, which is in review, as you can see. It's just adding the new schema. I need to respond to Mila at some point. Um, it's just adding the new schema. Again, um, we have the entities and the attributes that we think are some really good and reasonable defaults, refund amounts, the transaction ID to connect it to, the refund region, and certainly the currency of the transaction. And with those two pull requests, um, it's basically a new functionality that we can have. So yes, this is what I would like to showcase on, on, the, on how extensible this can be. And certainly on the modeling side, Emil uh, basically knows, knows everything about that and we'll be moving on next. Yeah, so, perfect. I'll I'll take yeah. over. Thanks a Good. lot. Uh, give me one sec. Cool. Yeah. So uh, thanks again, uh, Peter, for uh, for for showing everyone about the uh, the the tracking side of things. Um, so I'm Emil. Uh, I'm an analytics engineer here at Snowplow. I've been involved in um, the development of various DBT packages that we've already released uh, and the updating of those. Um, and then I've been kind of the main uh, main analyst or analytics engineer responsible for the creation of the e-commerce uh, dbt package which i'll be walking through now so assuming you've got all the tracking set up that uh, that that peter showed you how you, how you would do that then you can start to you can start to have that data land in your data warehouse and from then you can potentially choose to employ the dbt e-commerce package that we've created to do all the data modeling for you so that you don't have to worry too much about that and you can just focus on generating and actioning on your insights so at a high level what does the e-commerce dbt package do so the main thing it does which is similar to all the other dbt packages is it takes that e-commerce in this case e-commerce behavioral data that snowplow generates that it puts in your atomic events table and it transforms that into a series of derived tables so in the case of e-commerce, we'll walk through the various derived tables that are generated in a bit, but it'll pretty much be a one-to-one -one mapping of the high-level entities that uh, that Peter just walked through. So we're talking about uh, interactions related to cart, to checkout, to products, to transactions, all those kinds of things. Um, so that, again, you don't have to worry about pulling all of these potentially nested uh, contexts out and flattening them and then transforming them and doing all that stuff yourself. Um, one of the big advantages of using our dbt package is that we have already written the incremental logic for you so that we can process all these events that happen incrementally in a modular manner in a modular manner sorry so that you can pick and choose if you for some reason don't want to uh, or, or aren't tracking anything related to uh, checkout steps that's fine you don't have to do any modeling around that but if you're modeling uh, or if you're tracking something related to transactions to products to uh, carts, then cool. You can uh, leave those models modules, sorry, on, and then we can do uh, the transformation and data modeling for those aspects of the e-commerce tracking. Obviously, by or or in general, we would recommend you uh, use all aspects of the the of the tracking and the data modeling if 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 you can leverage them. Um, but if not, then that's completely fine. And what's nice about the modular manner in which it's written as well is that if you want to completely customize one aspect, so if you have a very different, let's say, checkout flow for 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 whatever reason, um, compared to what we would have otherwise expected, then you can turn off um, the the checkout steps uh, data model and instead write your own that can be leveraged uh, yourself, so that you can take advantage of all the uh, all the custom uh, aspects of of your checkout flow. Um, then lastly, we have this also in our other, other DBT packages. So if you've used those before, then hopefully uh, you'll be familiar with it, but we have a custom incremental materialization. So for those of you who are 
unaware, DBT provides kind of an out of the box incremental materialization. Um, we wrote a more efficient version of that for snowplow data and for um, basically for, for web behavioral data, which was back in the day when we wrote it quite a lot more efficient. Uh, DBT has caught up a little bit now, um, but we're also leveraging that custom incremental materialization in this, uh, well, in this package as well, so that you can begin to benefit from that as well. And you don't have to worry too much about creeping, uh, creeping costs uh, on your data warehouse when it comes to generating more and more data and then the, the compute costs associated with transforming all that data. So those are three big things that the e-commerce DBT package offers. Um, and then in terms of kind of the, the modules that are generated inside the, the DBT package, we have the base module, which, like I said, performs that incremental logic, figuring out basically which events, which e-commerce events need to be processed in this next run um, and outputs the table, which contains that deduplicated data set so that you can have all the different e-commerce events that you're tracking. Um, by default, this will just be uh, e-commerce action events, but you can add other, other events uh, with that quite quite easily, which I'll, I'll I'll show you in a bit. Then based off of these e-commerce base events uh, table, you will get these different modules around carts and how they work, checkouts, products, transactions, and sessions. And we'll go through a little bit more in depth how they work in a sec. But to start, um, I'll also walk through the docs a little bit and show you um, where in the docs you can find more information about the e-commerce data model and where you can kind of get started with uh, setting it all up. So if you go to docs.snowplow.io, um, instead of going for collecting data, which Peter showed us a little bit, we can go to modeling your data and then modeling your data with DBT. And then you can see a little bit about the e-commerce data model under the e-commerce data model heading, where it talks a little bit about these different uh, these different models, like uh, modules, sorry, like I like I mentioned, the base, carts, checkouts, products, transaction sessions. Talks a little bit about what kind of information they have, um, and uh, where you can where you can find them. What kinds of tables are are being output? Um, if you go on the quick start guide, you can see how you can set everything up. So you can see uh, how you can leverage the selector.yaml file that uh, DBT has, so that you don't have to worry about writing DBT run dash model and then writing all the different models, you can just use uh, the selector that we've created for you. Um, you can see how you can set up if you have kind of custom source uh, source data locations. Um, you can see how you can set up various variables. So like I mentioned before, um, by default in that base uh, module, you will get the Snowplow e-commerce action event types, uh, but you can add using the Snowplow e-commerce event names variable, you can add your own custom e-commerce events such that they will be processed as well in the same manner as all the other, uh, or as the uh, Snowplow e-commerce events that, that are provided kind of out of the box. And it talks a little bit about what you should do for BigQuery and how to run your model in general. Um, and then maybe one more thing that I'd want to touch on is under this configuration. If you scroll down a little bit, great. You can see what are the different, uh, again, what's the structure and what are the different modules inside the Snowplow e-commerce DBT package. But what you can also see is how to disable certain parts of it. And maybe more importantly, what are all the variables that you can leverage in the e-commerce package from your dbtproject.yaml file um, in such a way that you can customize kind of the behavior of the dbt package without actually rewriting or, or writing any new code. So we can walk through that a little bit um, towards the end of this, uh, of, of this office hours. But at a high level, you know, you can decide that your categories might have a different separator to the default. By default, it's the, uh, I never know whether it's the forward slash or the backward slash, but this slash. But that could be if for, you know, if for your case, that's a semicolon or an underscore or a hyphen or whatever. This is something you can specify here and the data model will deal with that appropriately. Um, Similarly here, like we said before, you have the e-commerce event names where you can provide a list of all the e-commerce events you want to process. Um, you have the number of categories that exist uh, in your categorization classification, I guess, um, where you can provide the maximum number. And then we will, the data model will split out into that many columns of subcategories. 
So the default value is four. So by default in your uh, derived product table, you are going to have four columns related to categories. And these will branch out to all the different subcategories that exist. If this is eight, cool. Then eight columns will be generated and all the categories will be split into, um, well, up to eight different subcategories. Uh, you can also define, for example, when your data has started um, or when your data has started landing in your data warehouse, let the data model knows from when to, to start processing your data and all that kind of uh, stuff. So if you've worked with other DBT packages before, then this should all be hopefully somewhat familiar to you. Uh, and if not, then this is a great resource basically to get a better understanding of how the data modeling works um, and how DBT uh, works at a at a kind of high level, especially with regards to our e-commerce uh, e commerce package. So going back to the slides, what does your modeled data look like? And we'll just focus on kind of five, I know in this slide there's only four, but we'll focus on five um, main entities basically. Um, and so one of the derived tables that you'll get is going to be, or one of the tables that lands in your derived schema is going to be um, the cart interactions. And so the main highlights that you can get from cart interactions is for each cart, you can see what was the uh, total value of the products inside that cart. When was that cart created? When was that cart um, either emptied or when was that cart transacted and so successfully uh, purchased? And you can see all that data um, at a very high level for all the e-commerce data that you've had as a direct output of running um, the e-commerce DBT package that we've provided. Similarly, for checkouts, you can see uh, you know, what payment information was used, what delivery information was used if you're tracking these, uh, these, these details. And maybe more interestingly, you can also see if for this checkout attempt, the um, the actual web session was entered at a certain step and which step that was. So you can get a, potentially get a better idea of if your you know, uh, cart abandonment email campaigns are helping people to actually end up finishing their, uh, their checkout flow or various other marketing campaigns that you're using. You can kind of use this information to see what the, uh, what the success rate of these kinds of campaigns are. Um, then, at a very high level, we have the same kind of view for products. So you can see for each product, when it was viewed, when it was added, um, when it was added to cart, when it was removed from a cart, uh, what product list what it, was it on, when it was viewed this time, uh, what was the status, the inventory status, was it out of stock, was it not, uh, were there specific uh, discounts on this product, all these kinds of things. And like I mentioned before, you can see the various different uh, subcategories that this, uh, that this product had as well. So basically, you can get a kind of a holistic view of uh, of everything related to that uh, to that product, and straight out of the box, assuming the trend, uh, the tracking is is all in place, which is very nice. Um, and then lastly, for these four, you have the transactions. So you get again per transaction ID, basically the uh, payment method that was used, what was the total revenue generated, what were discounts applied, how many products were were actually included in that transaction you know, when all of these things happened. Um, so like Peter said, you can start to leverage some of this information to basic, well, to try to understand how long certain aspects of the transaction or checkout flows took and maybe use that to to understand whether there's certain uh, parts of the checkout and transaction flow that you might, that might be worth optimizing to try and, you know, derive better performance and try and keep people, um, yeah, try and try and drive up basically that that conversion rate uh, that you'd want, and then all of these kind of four things. So all of these will end up in their own uh, derived tables, and then they all feed into what will eventually be um, uh, the derived sessions table, which is based on a domain session ID, and then kind of aggregates the behavior of a well of a specific session with regards to products, to carts, checkouts, transactions, right? So based on a unique domain session ID or based on a specific domain session ID, you will get an aggregation of the number of unique carts that were created, that were emptied, that were transacted on within that session, uh, how many checkout steps this session went through, um, you know, which products were viewed, were added to cart, were removed from cart, how many of those there were, 
um, how many transactions were attempted, how many tra transactions were completed. Um, we will also in the future be adding how many transactions uh, failed as well. Um, but that's uh, that's a bit of a spoiler and, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, as well as these things, as well as like doing a bunch of basically distinct counts, um, you'll also get an idea of when the first and last within this uh, session cart was created, the first cart was trans first and last cart were transacted. When was the first and last checkout attempted? When did that succeed? Uh, same with product interactions and transaction interactions. So it basically it takes the um, the interactions that we looked at on this on this previous slide and it wraps them up or it aggregates them up to a session level so you can start to use that to get a better understanding of how certain uh, how certain session behaviors are, are are going and try and get a better understanding of how users maybe flow through your website and how smooth the whole process uh, is as a at a higher level at a session level um, which should hopefully help you see kind of a bigger picture um then pivoting kind of from that to the uh, accelerator itself here we'll quickly walk through how you can via this accelerator how you can install and set up the dbt package and then how you can use our pre-built um streamlit dashboard to also model and visualize that uh, that data once it's been modeled with the uh, with the dbt package so this is the same accelerator link that uh, peter just walked through but then he walked through the the tracking aspect of everything and now quickly we'll walk through the modeling and the uh, visualization so if you're familiar with dbt then installing the dbt package should be relatively straightforward if you're not that's completely fine you basically in your dbt directory you create a packages.yaml file if one doesn't already exist and when you have that packages.yaml file whether you've created it fresh or whether it already existed you just add this package snowplow snowplow e-commerce uh, you don't have to specify a version but currently the latest version is 0.3.0 so you can specify that and then it will be tied to that. And then once you save that file, uh, your packages.yaml, within that, uh, your your dbt folder, basically your dbt project, you just need to go into the console and run dbt depth. And then D dbt will automatically fetch the version 0.3.0 of the Snowplow e-commerce package and install that into your uh, dbt project. Once you've done that, uh, you'll need to go to your um, dbt project.yaml file, which is kind of your main, uh, the main location where you set your project specific parameters and configurations. Um, and in there, you'll basically need to say uh, which, well, if, if you want, if you don't want the default uh, values to be, to be written, you'll want to say which, you know, where your Snowplow events are sitting, how many category levels there are, how many checkout steps there are, um, what uh, event names you have and when your data started flowing from. And if you set all these different variables, uh, then after that, if you run a dbt run, our e-commerce dbt package will know how to deal with when to start processing data from, uh, where to find you know, your atomic event data. And also, again, like, like I mentioned before, how many different categories to split out into, um, into different columns as well as for the checkout steps, we want to know how many checkout steps there are so that we can figure out if a user got to the final checkout step, yes or no. So in the case where it's four, if we see a, if we see from the tracking that they reached checkout step number four, then great. We know they got to the last uh, checkout step. So we can uh, model that in your checkout steps interactions uh, models. If this, uh, if there were a total of 10 checkout steps and they only got to the number four, then we know that that wasn't the last one yet. So that checkout, uh, might not necessarily have succeeded. Then similarly here, we talk about adding the selectors to the project and running the data model once you've added the selector is just as simple as, uh, as, as writing the command dbt run double dash selector and then snowplow underscore e-commerce. And then it will run, it will run in your data warehouse and it will output these, um, well, some data into your scratch and derived schemas and the derived data will be what we just uh, talked about with those kind of five different uh, five different entities. So you can obviously explore the 
Snowplow data yourself, whether that be right now we support BigQuery, Snowflake, um, and Databricks. So be it in the BigQuery web UI, the Snowflake uh, web UI, or in your Databricks um, SQL Explorer um, instance. And you'll find that your, surprise, surprise, your Scratch data sits in the Scratch schema, your derived data sits in the derived schema, and then manifest data sits in your Snowplow manifest schema. Um, in general, you don't need to worry about the manifest data that mostly helps uh, us, well, helps the data models keep track of where it, what, what data it last processed, and it might help a little bit with debugging, but assuming everything runs properly, you don't ever really need to touch that. The scratch data or the scratch schema, sorry, is kind of filled with data that is always dropping and being recomputed is always around uh, the data that's going to be processed in this current uh, run. So this might be nice to explore a little bit. Um, if you're trying to add custom modules, you'll probably start them off in the scratch schema. And then once you've kind of created a, uh, a mature and more permanent uh, data model, you will then insert that into the, the derived schema. And the derived schema is where you have your kind of main outputs, which you can use for downstream model and reporting. And that will basically be, you know, the, the total or, or the, uh, you know, the cart interactions that have happened throughout the history of your tracking, uh, whereas Scratch will just be the cart interactions that you've had uh, for the latest processed data. So in general, Scratch, you want to use for experimentation stuff, and then derived, you'll want to use for uh, your downstream modeling and reporting. Uh, here, we've added some kind of example queries that you can run inside your... Uh, well, inside your, again, Databricks, uh, Snowflake, or BigQuery instances. And you can get an idea of, you know, what were the last five sessions with abandoned carts? Uh, what's the top product variant uh, in terms of, yeah, product interactions? So what variant of, of, of each specific product ID was most, uh, was most in this case, was most purchased? Um, yeah, and then which checkout step are users entering at? Um, well, not necessarily most frequently because we haven't ordered them, but if you wanted to order them, then you can see most frequently. So those are just some examples, but that's how you know analysts can start to play around with the data that's been fed uh, into your data warehouse as a result of adding this uh, e-commerce tracking. And then lastly, um, we have a, a kind of a ready-made-ish dashboard for you to start exploring. And we built that using Streamlit, um, which is quite nice because Streamlit, you can just, well, it's, free and you can just host it uh, host it yourself and then have um, have analysts or stakeholders interact and add some filters and and, 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 and interact with the data. So we've created um, some code snippets for you to uh, set up using either BigQuery or Snowflake. We don't currently have Databricks support for it, but that's something we will be adding. Um, and basically you just run the following three commands uh, in your um, terminal. You create a pip environment that you install, and then you, you know, SSH into it. Basically, you set up a database connection for BigQuery. Um, you'll need to do the familiar things of setting up a service account, uh, including all the various, uh, well, values for all the secrets that are related to that service account. Um, and then for BigQuery itself, you'll need to say what project ID you're working on and where. So in what schema or in BigQuery terms, what data set your data, your derived data is um, is being sent to. Um, and then for Snowflake, uh, you're doing the same thing, except you don't have to worry about this, uh, this service account, but instead you'll give it, you know, your DBT credentials or your data modeling credentials, whatever you have, but you need to make sure that it's connected to your uh, Snowflake instance. And then all you have to do is within that same, within that same location, uh, in your terminal, you just run streamlit run dashboard.py and you'll get something like this. So it'll say, you know, depending on the time of day, not very fancy, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Um, and it will give you an idea of, yeah, how many transactions there were, what's the average order value, how many views of different products happened, all these kinds of things. Um, and it will just give you or your analyst kind of a starting point upon which to build out, you know, what you actually want to, uh, what you actually want to see in some, in some probably more permanent data visualization. So this is not necessarily something that we're saying, 
this will solve all of your uh, all of your data visualization problems straight away, but this will at least give your your analysts or whoever a starting point upon which to uh, to basically build out some more uh, some more data models. If you don't use you know Streamlit, if instead you use Tableau or you use Looker or whatever else, um, Power BI, then cool. It's also not that difficult for an analyst to basically take the underlying queries that we've written for this um, for this dashboard and port them over to Tableau, to LookML, or to um, to Power BI as well. Because basically what you're doing here, sorry, is you're copying a GitHub repo. You're cloning a GitHub repo. Um, and inside that GitHub repo, we have a folder called queries. And inside that queries folder, we have .sql files for all the queries that we use, all the queries underlying um, this, this kind of uh, streamlit dashboard. So you can just leverage those immediately if you um, if you want and, and import them into the kind of the tool of, uh, the tool of your choice. I think lastly, at a high level, I just want to show, um, we have in GitHub, we have the, uh, in our snowplow organization, we have the DBT snowplow e-commerce, um, repository sitting there that's public. Anyone can look at it and yeah, have, have, have a look through. Um, and here, I just wanted to highlight that here are all the different, um, variables listed once again that we have that you can kind of modify yourself um, if you want to slightly change the behavior of our e-commerce package. So they are also written in the docs. So they're written right here and there's a much more verbose description of you know what the definition of each um, of each variable is and what its default value is. But you know sometimes this is almost a little bit too verbose and if you just want to see at a high level what can I play around with, well, this is everything. Um, so we've already walked through it a couple of times, so I'm not going to, you know, uh, go over that again, but just to show you that this resource is there as well. And, you know, if, again, if this is, if this would be your first exposure to something like DBT, then maybe you can also use this uh, repository itself to get an idea of how to potentially structure uh, your own uh, DBT projects for your own internal data modeling, as well as obviously for, um, for, for e-commerce or, or web or whatever kind of other uh, data modeling needs you might have. So lastly, this is something we both already touched on. So Peter and myself, um, coming up soon on our roadmap, we're going to be looking at adding more functionality um, to both the tracking and the data modeling side of things. Um, some of the things we're looking into is, yeah, adding um, promotions, added in banners, so being able to track those, being able to track pop-ups, pop those kinds of things, as well as refunds. So uh, Peter already showed a, a quick kind of preview of the pull request we already have for the refund schema and adding that into the tracker itself. Um, we're also going to be looking at uh, transaction errors, so that come from third-party uh, uh, third payment integrations and being able to kind of uh, have those be part of your normal snowplow tracking workflow instead of having to go to those third-party APIs and later, you know, co coalescing all the different or, or, or cross-referencing all the different errors that you might've gotten with the actual transactions from your, uh, from your tracking, from your snowplow tracking. So we kind of want to make that a more, um, yeah, more cohesive uh, process. Um, and then, you know, you might be asking yourself, okay, well, how do we come up with these ideas of, of, of what fun functionality we want to add, um, what functionality we've already had. And like Peter mentioned in the beginning, um, we looked a little bit at what does the landscape of tools already provide. Uh, we leveraged some of the internal uh, knowledge around what we already know and, and, and kind of the internal expertise that we have here about e-commerce tracking. But obviously, we'd also love to hear more ideas from the community. So that's one of the reasons why we're holding this uh, this office hours. Um, if you have ideas or if you see that there are certain things that we're missing or certain things that don't really make, potentially don't really make sense to your, to your specific implementation of what you want, whether you're, you know, a paying customer or otherwise, or an open source user, you know, that makes, makes no difference to Peter and myself. We're happy to hear from you. Uh, if you want to, you know, chat with us and ask us questions now, that's completely great. Uh, if not, you can also ask us on on Discourse. You can go to the various GitHub repositories if you wanted. You could go to um, the Ecom Tracker, the the DBT package, Igloo Central, 
throw up some issues, start some discussions, uh, we'll be there and we'll be happy to interact with you and try and help make this uh, e-commerce tracking as well as all of our other um, products and offerings as good as possible. So don't hesitate to reach out. No question is, uh, yeah, it's too simple or too silly. There's probably many things that we've overlooked. Um, so it will just be great to hear hear feedback from uh, anyone and everyone around what what you could possibly want added uh, added to the uh, yeah to the e-commerce accelerator. Uh, with that, I think I will you know uh, on behalf of Peter and myself, I'd like to thank you guys for for listening. Thank you for your time, and um, yeah, we'll open the floor up to any specific questions that we might have right now. Brilliant, Emil and Peter. Thank you so much for that. Thanks for all the work you put into this presentation. Seriously, it's uh, it's really impressive stuff. Um, guys, if you do have any questions directly for them right now, feel free to chuck it in the chat or uh, unmute yourself and just ask. Um, we had a few pop through as people were registering. So if you don't mind, guys, I'll quickly run through some of them if you can give us a quick answer for them, if that's okay. Um, the first one was, how does open source allow the enrichment of the e-commerce functionality? I don't know which one of you guys wants to have a crack at that one. Uh, I might take that. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for like uh, having the, the opportunity to restate what me and Emil already hinted, and if we even showcased that the the power of the the open source philosophy that we have here at Snowplow is first of all everything developed in the open. Uh, so you guys, you know what pull requests we're working on, what's the blockers, what's missing for us to answer, and stuff like that. Um, this is certainly something that we keep in mind while developing our own features as well. For example, as we showcased, uh, anyone can go to the JavaScript repository and see what we did to add the refund capability. What are the schemas? What is the DBT addition? Uh, Emil knows better for that as well. And what is the tracker addition? And this is something that uh, we, we foster everywhere in what we do. It, it makes things so much better, so much easier, so much more understandable for our clients and the community as well. And yeah, as, as Emil said, uh, just go on Discourse, go on GitHub, open up an issue. Oh, you know, guys, I want to track the, for example, the transaction profit. Uh, what can you do about that? And probably in a few days, you'll have like the profit attribute in the uh, in the igloo schema that we have for the transactions. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's 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 open. Uh, we design for straightforward additions, and yeah, that that's my take. I would be extremely happy for for everyone to to help contribute in that. Nice, thanks, Peter. Um, this one might be slightly harder to, to answer, but maybe just a quick one for you. Um, how would this solution compare to uh, to other ones in the wild, such as GA4 and Rudder Stack? Um, if you can take a stab at that one. Yeah, yeah, uh, certainly kind of kind of tough <laughs> to, to touch on these subjects. Uh, so first of all, uh, something that we, we have not mentioned, I, I believe, uh, this is one of our latest accelerators and more uh, our more recent ones. Oh, I think it... oh, can you can you, you hear me now? Ourselves last one for a little bit, but you're good now. Go for it. Oh, yeah, good. Sorry, um, my internet was misbehaving. So, uh, this is one of the most recent additions to our e-commerce to our accelerators. Uh, it's something that we are actively working on and adding new features. For example, you already see the refund and the promotions uh, pull requests are already up. Um, lots of things are coming on. And what we try to do is, first of all, we've looked into the alternatives, as you said, GA4, other stuff. We try to provide reasonable defaults, taking the good parts from, from other implementations, but also mixing in our expertise in the domain. For example, Emil showed the variables on the model to change the, let's say, the category separators and the lookback windows and stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, th this saves so much pain from cross-department tasks that get into a backlog, analysts are just waiting, the implementation people, they're just, okay, let, let me get that in five sprints forward. So uh, certainly some that we keep kept in mind with our experience. Now, in the comparison subjects, we're not yet in feature parity. That's just my take, but we're actively working on that and adding things 
uh, I could say a, a tad more better from 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 our experience. That's what what we're trying to do, and all this. Uh, so we don't have a myopic view on let's say this e-commerce accelerator only, with the power of Snowplow, which is the common language that schema uh, gave data quality, the warehouse options. Uh, we we have all of them that that Emil talked about and other ones in the future as well. We're fully open source, and that's fully, our whole product is open source. Even the accelerators are open source. If someone spots something, uh, something, something weird or wants to add a new addition, it's open source. And the DPA's initiative, the data product accelerators that we are working on, is basically a guided approach that helps um, guide, let's say, companies and implementers and new people getting into the subject almost in, again, I would say in a hand-holding way to get off the ground quickly. And as a kind of a spoiler, as Emil said, uh, we're planning on adding some things, um, as we call them, like showcasing a bit more advanced, um, let's say, cases and analysis and how you can go about them. Because we really believe in uh, the case that you get the data, you get all this good data, you track them, uh, but now what? Uh, that's what we're trying to do with the DPA, the data product accelerators, uh, the solving the now what, and certainly distilling insights from the data and generating the value that each of these data points and insights have. So yeah, that's our take. Um, so yeah, it, it would be something like a flame stuff, but yeah, we, we have our, these benefits. Okay, can I, sorry, Jackson, can I quickly also expand on that and then have that relate to the uh, the question that you just asked uh, Anton as well? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think it's like the key highlight, uh, I mean, there's many very good things that Peter just said, but I think one of the key takeaways is, yes, that it's all completely open source. So if you want to extend the functionality of um, the e-commerce tracking, you can create your own you can create your own custom events, your own custom schemas, all that stuff. But you can also see our current design philosophy. And so use that as inspiration for how we would recommend you, you know, create these custom event types and create these custom uh, custom contexts and schemas. Um, and then similarly, the same extends to the data modeling side of things. So with our DBT project or with our DBT package, sorry, um, right now, you it will by default track all of the again default um, context and uh, e-commerce event types that we have, but it's very easy to create your own additional uh, data models. You just need to write a new SQL file, and you can reference for specifically for the data modeling. You can reference the this base module that I talked about to extract just those custom event types that you created out of the incremental flow that's already be, that's already happening and it's already being processed. And then you can model them however you want. You can do whatever aggregates you want. You can do whatever uh, window functions you want. And that will then land in your derived table. But again, you, so number one, you can leverage kind of the incremental framework that we've already built. But number two, you can also implement or leverage the design principles that we have for the other modules and basically just copy the same flow, but but apply that to your own custom context and custom events. So yeah, by, by, by nature, let's say, at least from the data modeling side, DBT is already very good at allowing you to extend it, but also by the fact that we're, that, that it's all open source, you can just copy the flow of what we're already doing and you don't have to, you know, you don't have to worry too much about specific um, implementation, like design decisions. You can just follow the same design that we have if, if you like it and worry specifically about what kinds of aggregations I want for my uh, for my custom Snowplow events. So I hope, Anton, that answers. Uh, okay, great. Thanks. Brilliant. Thank you, Emil and Peter. Uh, and Anton for that question. I hope that I covered everything you needed. Um, we're approaching the hour, guys, so we will wrap it up there. Um, we will email you guys with this recording with the slide deck, and you can have another chance at that point to ask extra questions or anything did pop up. Um, but thank you again very, very much for joining us. Uh, thank you for the question, Anton. And thank you, Peter and Emil, for all the work you put in uh, to this to this uh, you know piece in general and also to the present presenting it today. So we really appreciate it. Thanks again, everybody. Have a good have a good rest of your day.
Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.